The world is fast approaching 50,000 deaths from coronavirus and a million confirmed cases. Scientists are working day and night to develop a vaccine, but it still appears to be a long way off. So countries continue to do the best they can to limit the spread, but the numbers are still skyrocketing in the US and the death tolls in some European countries are staggering. And there's been another two deaths announced in Australia today. So here are today's developments. In the last hour, we've heard of two more deaths, a woman in her 70s in Victoria and a man in his 80s in Queensland. That takes the national toll to 23. A large military-style operation will begin soon to help thousands of crews stuck on cruise ships anchored off the east coast. Doctors will be flown to the ships to test around now 9,000 crew. In New South Wales, lockdown laws will remain in place for at least 90 days. Hundreds of Australians and New Zealanders have been allowed to fly out of Nepal after the Australian government encouraged them to leave. The 222 Australians and 28 New Zealanders will touch down in Brisbane today. The CSIRO has begun the first stage of testing potential vaccines for COVID-19. The three-month process is underway at a high containment biosecurity facility in Geelong. In Europe, both Italy and Spain have passed through 100,000 cases. Spain has had its worst day in the pandemic with 864 fatalities. In the UK, there were 563 deaths in the one day and a 4,000 bed makeshift hospital in London's east is almost ready for patients. The United States has become the first country to pass through 200,000 confirmed coronavirus cases. The World Health Organisation expects the number of confirmed cases around the world to reach a million in the next few days. So a woman in her 70s has died in a Victorian hospital, becoming the fifth person to die from coronavirus in Victoria. The state's health minister, Jenny McCarkos, says the overall number of cases has now passed through 1,000. Uh, I can confirm that we have 1,036 Victorians who have been diagnosed with coronavirus and that is an increase of 68 from yesterday. Uh, sadly, a woman in her 70s has passed away as a result of COVID-19, bringing Victoria's death toll to five. Uh, 57, there are 57 uh, confirmed cases believed to be related to community transmission. This is a significant increase from 39 yesterday. Uh, there have been more than 49,000 tests that have been conducted to date. I'm very pleased to uh, announce that we have, a, we have struck a deal with Victoria's major private hospitals uh, this deal will see our health care system, both public and private, operating as one in our joint effort to combat COVID-19. What it means is that we will ha be able to utilise the capacity, uh, the beds, and there are 9,000 beds in our private hospital system, as well as 170 ICU beds, as well as the staff of the private hospitals to uh, add to our public hospital system and it'll ensure that we'll be able to utilise our private hospitals during the peak of the pandemic, relieving pressure of our busy public hospital system. Uh, in the last few days, uh, I had mentioned that we had established a dedicated portal on the Department of Health uh, website to receive expressions of interest from our clinical staff and others to help us uh, with our efforts around COVID-19. And, uh, and I'm very pleased that just in a matter of days, we've had over 4,000 people who have registered their interest to step up and come back to work uh, and to assist us uh, during what will be a very challenging period. We have worked very closely with APRA as the national regulator to ensure that uh, they are contacting um, uh, retired healthcare workers um, to uh, refresh their registration uh, and make sure we can cut through all the red tape and be able to bring these people back online as quickly as possible. Uh, so APRA is contacting those individuals and we've asked them to expedite that for Victorian based uh, retired healthcare workers uh, and then those healthcare workers are going onto our portal on our website and registering their interest. We'll then be looking to match up these skills uh, with health services across the state. Victorian Health Minister Jenny McCarkos speaking there just a short time ago and an 85-year-old man has died in hospital in Toowoomba in southeast Queensland. 
Queensland Health Minister Stephen Miles says there's been another steady rise in infections recorded. Well, overnight I can confirm that we've had 57 further positive cases of COVID-19 in Queensland. That represents an ongoing stabilisation of our positive rate over recent days. We now have 835 in total. 60 of those are currently in hospital. The rest are either recovered or being treated at home. Nine patients are in ICU. Uh, eight of them are receiving ventilation. Tragically, though, I can also also confirm that Queensland has recorded its third death in Queensland and its fourth Queensland death overnight. An 85-year-old male uh, passed away in the Darling Downs Hospital and Health Service at the Toowoomba uh, Hospital uh, overnight. And of course, uh, all of our condolences, the condolences of the whole of Queensland, go to uh, that gentleman's family, which is of course grieving right now. And uh, each of these deaths reminds us of just how important our effort uh, to stop the spread of this outbreak, to slow the spread of this outbreak is. The longer we can slow it, the better our hospitals will be able to cope with demand, the more lives our doctors and nurses and health staff will be able to save. And that is what is at stake here, Queensland lives people in your community, your neighbourhood, maybe even your family. And so when we ask you to do things which are uh, often inconvenient, uh, sometimes uh, are very inconvenient, sometimes very uh, impactful on your work or your business, please know, please know that we are taking uh, this seriously because it is serious. This virus is deadly. Queensland Health Minister Stephen Miles speaking there in Cairns in far north Queensland a short time ago. In New South Wales, this large military-style operation will get underway soon to help thousands of crew stuck on cruise ships anchored off the east coast. Reporter Jesse Dorsett joins us now from Sydney. Jesse, g'day. So take us through what's likely to happen with these cruise ships. Joe, this is going to be a huge operation. In New South Wales alone, there's uh, one cruise ship that's docked in the state. Seven are currently off the coast. There are 8,500 crew, about that number, just, just shy of 9,000 that uh, are still on board. The Australian crew have been brought back to the mainland, as have 14 other people for medical and compassionate reasons. Uh, for example, uh, three pregnant women are, are back, uh, back in Sydney now. Uh, but uh, the Australian government has ordered uh, these cruise ships to return to their home ports, but they're refusing to do so because they say it's unsafe because more crew may become sick with coronavirus and will require hospitalisation. So there's a bit of a stalemate at the moment. The New South Wales Police and Australian Border Force are working on a solution, this operation which could start in the next few days. Basically, they'll uh, contract a private company, Aspen Medical, who will chopper doctors out to these cruise ships. They'll drop doctors on, on board and they'll uh, examine the, the 8,500 crew. So uh, they're not going to test everyone, but they'll um, take their temperature, uh, test the people who need it, and then bring the, the sickest back, back to shore and put them in hospital. The police commissioner, Mick Fuller, has told us that's the safest option. Now around the world that when the hospital systems become overwhelmed, then lots and lots of people die. So my fear is by bringing 9,000 people off the cruise ships into isolation, not knowing if they have the virus or they may develop symptoms that would absolutely overload our hospital system and everything that we have done to this point would be for nothing. Despite this pro proposal, Joe, the cruise ship companies haven't yet given a guarantee that even after the doctors have been on board and they've attended to their crews, that they will return to their home ports. Mick Fuller tells us that they are currently in discussion with the companies about the proposal. And Jesse, we've had these new rules where you can't go outside unless you've got, um, you're doing it for specific purposes. Uh, what's the go with how long those rules are going to be in place? Yeah, they came in uh, from midnight on Monday. Uh, the police commissioner this morning revealed that they'll be in place for 90 days. So New South Wales residents can expect uh, those, uh, those very strict regulations to still be in place for another three months or so, just, just shy of three months. But he says at this stage he can't see any reason that he would need to 
ask for an extension. And as you say, Joe, they are very strict rules. Uh, you know, you could be fined up to $11,000 or jailed for six months if you leave home without a valid reason. Yeah. And we should direct people to, because there are kind of different rules for each different state and territory, uh, and if people want to find out specifically what they are for their state and territory, uh, the WhatsApp chat that the government has set up is a really good guide. So uh, see if you can set that up. It's pretty straightforward. I'm a troglodyte and even I was able to work out how to do it. Uh, there's also an app, a government app that's been set up. And Jesse, uh, what's happening with these uh, group of Australians who've been stranded in Nepal? Yeah, 222 Aussies, 28 New Zealanders. They've been on a plane uh, for a few hours now from Kathmandu. They're on their way back to Brisbane uh, where they'll go into uh, self-isolation in hotels and then uh, they'll uh, split off and return home after that two-week period. Uh, a lot of them were out trekking uh, up in the mountains, including Mount Everest Base Camp. Uh, when they got back to Kathmandu, the Australian Embassy was telling them, please go home now because although the outbreak in Nepal isn't, uh, isn't huge at the moment, uh, they're worried that if it does develop, it'll put uh, unnecessary burdens on the local health system. I've been having a quick look at a, a Facebook group that uh, these Australians have been using to coordinate their efforts and speak with diplomats and everything uh, seems to be running smoothly. They've all chipped in. But now, Joe, there are people, Australians from other countries like the Philippines who are commenting, how do we organise something like right. this so we can also get home? Yeah. Okay, Jesse Dawson reporting there from Sydney.